This week, New Zealand announced that they're doing another nationwide lockdown after having their first COVID case since February. Now, it may seem like a bit of an extreme measure, but to be fair to them, as they said, hitting it hard and fast has worked for them before, and their concern is about how transmissible this Delta variant has proven to be. So it seems, despite us now being a year and a half into the pandemic, which is a really long time, there are obviously still risks to people, but it seems there are still risks to major economies as well. Now, at the moment, the recent focus has been on the Delta variant of the virus, which is widespread in many countries around the world. But relatively speaking, it doesn't actually seem like the markets are too overly concerned by Delta and the risks that it poses. But does that mean that the markets are undervaluing the risk of Delta? And does it also mean that the markets are ignoring the risks of alternative variants a bit too much? You see, every time a virus spreads from one person to another, there's a chance that it may mutate. We've seen this happening already with COVID-19 many times, but fortunately so far, most of the strains haven't actually been much more harmful than the others. But the problem is, the more the virus is able to spread, and it's spreading quite well at the moment with the Delta variant, the more chance it has to mutate. And when it mutates, the probability of a transmissible or deadly variant obviously increases. For example, the Alpha variant was 50% more transmissible than the original Wuhan variant, and the Delta variant is now 60% more transmissible than the Alpha one. The Delta variant is obviously the main reason for this new wave in cases in around 100 countries and makes up 90% of COVID cases in the US. But in terms of the markets, the biggest reaction was understandably in early 2020 when the pandemic first started and there was the most uncertainty about what was going to happen. But since then, partly due to fiscal and monetary stimulus, partly due to there being fewer unknowns, partly due to people just getting tired of COVID, the markets seem to have been able to shake off any dips and just keep on moving on. The latest one was obviously in the middle of July when the S&P 500 fell just over 3% and this was considered to be a direct result of fears over the spread of the Delta variant. But we soon saw in just a matter of days that that decline was easily faded and things just went back to normal. You know, in countries like the UK and the US, it seems the general public has moved on from concerns about COVID. In the UK, I was in central London just yesterday, and it really feels like life is getting back to normal. I think people are fatigued from all of the COVID news and the fear-mongering, and just ready to put it all behind them. Now, this is obviously a big part of this because the vaccination rates are so high, which means that despite there being high numbers of COVID cases, the hospitalizations and the death rates are far lower than in countries that are under-vaccinated. For example, just a few weeks ago, when the UK was at the peak of its post-Euro 2020 wave of cases, we can see the comparison here to Indonesia. Cases were fairly similar, but there's a stark difference in the number of daily deaths. At the time, the UK had a 55% vaccination rate, while Indonesia had just 6%. So this might make people in the countries that are vaccinated relax a bit more, but the problem is that the countries where the virus is spreading rapidly is leading to there being more opportunities for mutations and new variants to emerge that could make things worse. Some scientists are now predicting that there may be another wave in major economies from variants such as Delta Plus or Lambda. Delta Plus is similar to the original Delta variant, as I'm sure you can tell from the name, but with a few changes. Some experts believe that it's more transmissible than the Delta, and early studies show that it does have the ability to bind more easily to lung cells and could be resistance therapies used to treat the infection. However, more data is required to confirm those claims, and according to John, Ho John Hopkins University, there isn't actually any reason to currently believe that Delta Plus will be any more of a challenge than Delta. But there's another one that's spreading rapidly, and that's the Lambda variant, which is widespread in South America. It shows that it's got a high transmission rate. It's also been detected in Australia, and according to Australia's National Science Agency, the Lambda variant has an eclectic set of mutations, many of which appear to be immune evasions. That is, allowing the virus to evade a person's immune response. Six of the key mutations in the virus's spike protein appear as three pairs of substitution mutations in close proximity. 
So the Lambda variant is missing elements that provoke immune responses, which means that many of the current vaccines may have a lower efficacy rate. If this one does take over as the dominant virus, extreme measures may need to be taken again to contain it until booster vaccines are distributed. However, more variants are pretty much guaranteed to pop up. Since COVID is now so embedded into the human population, it's pretty much impossible at this point to remove it completely. But from a market point of view, what tends to happen is that over time, despite the news being just as bad as before, it has less and less of an impact. You know, it's not necessarily that the market doesn't like bad news, it's more that the market doesn't like uncertainties. So it's more when things are a surprise that we get the big reactions, not necessarily because things are bad. But for now, Lambda currently sits on the World Health Organization's variants of interest list, along with four others whereas Delta sits in the variant of concern category. So for now at least, these other variants aren't too much of a concern. So how worried should we be from an economic point of view? Well, recent research, such as one by Goldman Sachs, has suggested that in Europe there are now manageable Delta variant risks and vaccinations have been a key factor in keeping hospitalizations low. So assuming there isn't a need for a sudden lockdown in a major economy like what we're seeing in New Zealand, it may be that the Delta variant risks are relatively under control now. The thing we need to keep an eye on is the emergence of other variants like Lambda or others, which may not be covered by the vaccine or may need boosters that would have a bit of a lead time. For the long term, most viruses that persist in human populations do become less virulent over a period of decades and centuries. In fact, some coronaviruses that are still around today and only cause mild cold symptoms are believed to have once started off by causing more serious diseases. But getting to that point with the current COVID is only a really long-term possibility. Now, what I think is important is that we don't undervalue the risks that are still out there and we make sure that we factor that in with any long-term holdings that we have. But likewise, I think it's very important that we don't allow ourselves to be gripped by fear over short-term things and cause any knee-jerk reactions that we end up regretting or you know, markets as a whole. We can just go through the facts, stay rational, and understand when something that we come across is purely fear-mongering. At the end of the day, most articles like to sensationalize things and start and end the article with a bit of a bang. So it often tends to be that you finish reading an article feeling a little bit more uneasy about things, even though maybe if you look at it from a rational point of view, you wouldn't feel that way. So on that note, let me finish this video by saying things are more under control than they were last year. We're much better placed to deal with the issues that we're facing now. Less vaccinated countries will receive the support they need and big organisations are focused on making that happen already. And we've all proven to be extremely resilient over the past year. So we'll overcome any negative effects that emerge. Just make sure you always protect your downside and just keep pushing on just like the markets have been. Take care. See you soon.